Greetings everyone and welcome to my channel. I'm your host Captain Ryan. Today's video I'm playing in the Australian Death Machine, also known as the HMAS Perth here in World of Warships. The battle's already gotten underway and due to a replay bug I was forced to cut about the first five minutes of this replay file. However, I haven't done too much damage and I haven't killed anything yet, but don't you worry, that will change. As the battle gets going right now, as it is, the enemy team currently holds the lead with the D and B cap points. So they've got two cap points. My team only has the A cap point at the moment. We've lost one of our two destroyers. The enemy team has lost a cruiser. The battle is a tier 8 maximum battle. There are tier 8 battleships in play. And so that's going to be a very important factor here because the Perth, well... She's not particularly sturdy, especially when fighting against battleships, and especially when fighting against tier 8 battleships. But that doesn't mean that a little tier 6 light cruiser like the Perth can't be absolutely devastating when put into the right positions. Speaking of the right positions, I'm using the concealment that I have on this ship, and I'm going to push up, and I'm going to start grabbing the C cap point. It's important that we get the C cap point, because the enemy team is currently up on points, and if we let them continue, they're going to win. I get torpedoes off there. Those are actually aimed at the Queen Elizabeth that's back there, who's sailing back behind that island. She's going to sail just into the range of those torpedoes if she comes around that island. In the meantime, there's the enemy Akazuki. I'm going to go ahead and get shots off at him. That's going to open me up for detection, but I've got my smoke screen up here in just a few seconds. So I slam on the brakes here. I am detected. That's to be expected. Fortunately, it doesn't look like anybody's actually shooting at me. And I'm able to pop my smoke screen here, and hopefully I can drop off detectability. Come on, yes. Drop off detectability. Take a few shots there, but not too bad. Akazuki pops his smoke screen. Get more shots off here. It'd be wonderful if I get the kill on him. Didn't get the kill on the Akazuki, but did get the kill on that Queen Elizabeth. And it looks like our Mahan has managed to secure the kill on that Akazuki. So that leaves the enemy team now down on ships. But that's not going to stay that way for long. If you look here, our Mahan, who's fairly low health, is out in the open. He's spotted. And there's an enemy cruiser up here that's going to go ahead and continue to shoot at him. And I see too many destroyer captains, especially U.S. destroyer captains, who are low health and they'll do this. They'll be out in the open and they'll continue shooting. You really, really do need to stop shooting, drop off detection, and just go hide. Come back later as a torpedo boat and then maybe open up with guns. Switched over to the armor piercing there. I thought that cruiser was going to come out broadside, but no, he's playing it very, very smartly and using that island as solid rock cover there. Torpedoes going out there did manage to set him on fire. Hopefully he'll repair that before the torpedo gets to him, and hopefully that torpedo will kill him, but it doesn't look like that's going to be the case. He did take a big hit there. I think that was from a battleship, but I'm not sure. Enemy Cleveland was spotted down at the D cap point. He was very low health. The enemy team is now in the process of capping A. So my team really, really in a world of hurt as the enemy team has all of the cap points except C. And C, well, that's the one we just finally capped after almost 10 minutes in the game. I'm going to get myself pushed up here and turned around. I don't want to go into the B cap point just yet. There's the enemy Cleveland. I've done quite a bit of damage to him, so I'd like to finish him off. And with the inertia fuse high explosive, I might actually be able to do that. The first shots fall just a little aft of him. He's going to return fire with high explosive, which is pretty smart on his part. He can cause me problems if he hits me. Can I hit him? Come on. Get that hit out there. Oh, so close. Just a little shot over him. Going to get those shots back out there. He's very, very low health. And if I can kill him, I can at least buy my team a few more seconds. Yes, there it is. I managed to do that. But caught out in the open at this point. If you look at what's around me, I've got a battleship behind me, and i got battleships in front of me, including the Tier 8 battleship there, and definitely don't want to be caught out in the open and detected with those enemy ships there. Big shout out to the guy in the Atlanta there. He's going to notice me at the end of the battle here, which I thought is actually kind of funny, considering I'm almost going to team torp him. And I'll tell you what I mean in a second here. In the meantime, there's a low health New Orleans that's out there. He's just taken a pretty sizable hit there. Now, 
I'm looking at the Nizanow that's pushing up here, and that Nizanow is just out of range of my torpedoes, but I think I kind of figure he's going to go push up around the headland of that island and try and get chasing shots onto that Atlanta. I also figured that Atlanta was not going to beach himself, which is exactly what he did. Did get a kill steal shot out there and finish off the New Orleans. He was pretty low health. I'm actually surprised, though, that I connected with as many as I was able to and was able to finish him off. The enemy team currently way up on points, and they still have a destroyer in play. It's only a tier 6 destroyer, but it's still a destroyer. Atlanta gets taken out, fortunately missed all my torpedoes anyway, and he was kind of in a bad situation where he really didn't have anywhere to go. I do feel a little bad that I put torpedoes in his direction, but then again, I don't really feel bad because, to be fair, I didn't expect you to survive that engagement anyway. So the enemy team is now up over 200 points above us. And they're gaining points rapidly because, again, they had three cap points. Now I'm pushing in here, I'm playing for the objectives. I could have gone down and I could have chased after that Sharn Horse, but getting the caps is a very important task. If you have a destroyer left in the game, this is something that they absolutely need to be doing. Since we don't have a destroyer, it's going to be me because, well, the Perth with its smoke screen and its detection range is kind of like a big destroyer, only it's got a citadel. And a catapult fighter for spotting. Smoke screen is available again. This Miyoko is pushing around this island. Now, the Miyoko knows full well that there's somebody here. If he was paying attention and has last knowns on, he can probably see that it was the Perth. So he's probably thinking he's got an advantage here. He's a tier 7 cruiser, he's got 8-inch guns, he can absolutely wreck me. But as you can see here, he's not quite able to spot me yet. He's not close enough. The Perth does have a very nice low spotting range when in smokescreen. I think it's just a little over 4.5 kilometers. So I'm able to get shots out repeatedly at this guy, and I'm able to finish him off. Supporting fire coming in there from, I think, the North Carolina, possibly the Sharnhorst, not entirely sure. Speaking of Sharnhorst, enemy Sharnhorst, well, he's still back down at the D cap point, and he's got a lot of health here. Being spotted by the Miyoko's catapult fighter there, that's going to be unfortunate for me while trying to be sneaky, but I'm also trying to contemplate where I want to go here. I'm thinking I might want to go back behind this island and stealth torp this Sharnhorst from behind, but simultaneously, I don't want to get caught out in the open behind the Sharnhorst, especially not at these kinds of ranges, because I know that he'll absolutely wreck me. Instead, I'm looking at the situation, and my team, down to just three ships at this point, really needs more bases to cap. And from the looks of it, it looks like the A cap point, our original home cap, is wide open. So I'm actually going to go up to the A cap point instead and grab it. Enemy team is now up almost 400 points. They're just about to hit that danger zone, that 900 points area where it's pretty much all down to you have to kill something if you want to stay in the game. And speaking of having to kill something if we want to stay in the game, take a look at the mini-map there. We have a friendly Fuso that's all the way back toward the edge, the corner of the map there, and that Fuso is engaging a Niza now, who's pretty low health as you can see, and an Alabama. And as we're going to see in a little bit, that Alabama is not particularly low health. Now, what I'm looking here is to see if that Fuso can take out that Nize now. It's a tier 6 versus a tier 7, so it's not that too mismatched. The Fuso's got a lot of 14 inch guns, but if he lets that Nize now get too close, it's going to be a problem. But if he can take the Nize now out, at the very least, if he can take the Nize now out, we might be able to stay in this game. The enemy team up into that 900 points bracket. Speaking of our other battleships, tier 7s here, these two Sharn Horses. Our Sharnhorst here in the C cap point is going to engage the enemy Sharnhorst. They're both about equal as far as health goes, but our friendly Sharnhorst, well, he eats a torpedo from the enemy Sharnhorst. Eisenau is almost dead. Can that Fuso finish him off? Come on, yes, the Fuso finishes him off. We stay in the game just a little bit longer. You can see the enemy team is now capping C, so uh, once again, we're not gaining points as rapidly as the enemy team. I pop my hydroacoustic because I don't know where that destroyer is. Enemy Sharnhorst eats a 
full set of torpedoes from our friendly Sharn Horse, and now that gives our friendly Sharn Horse the health advantage for dealing with this guy. Get spotted here as I push into the A camp point. That tells me that the enemy destroyer is nearby, so popping Hydra was absolutely the right choice to do here. Don't quite have my catapult fighters available just yet. And the enemy team did manage to take out our Fuso. But it puts the Alabama way, way out of position to really shoot at anything, so he's going to have to rely on that destroyer to continue spawning. And as you can see, once again, spotted. Plus, the enemy team still capping the sea cap point, so I know where that enemy destroyer is, because I know where the Alabama is. And that's when the enemy destroyer reveals his location by popping a smoke screen. So I get torpedoes off here. I'm going to slam on the brakes here. Still out in the open, don't have a smoke screen just yet. And I really am concerned that Alabama is going to decide he wants a piece of me. The enemy team, once again, in that 900 points range. It's really, really dangerous for us because we're going to have to, once again, kill something if we want to win. Now, that destroyer, because he's tier 6, would be definitely an easier target if we can spot him. In the meantime... I'm going to go ahead and push back to the sea cap point. The enemy team was forced out. That destroyer chose to leave the sea cap point. That's going to give my team just that little bit of an edge there because that's going to mean we're gaining points at three times the rate of the enemy team. So if our Sharnhorst can get himself turned around and go step on the decap point, we can prevent the enemy team from gaining any more points. Now there's the Alabama. He's got about half his health left here. I'm starting to get shots off at him, and I'm going to try and set him on fire. Torpedo's probably not going to do the best here. It's the Alabama. Basically 51, 52% torpedo protection there. So that means anything I hit him with isn't going to do a lot of damage. Now you'll notice there, he was on fire. He puts that fire out and that is going to cost him. I have inertia fuse high explosive, so I'm going to do a little bit more damage than I would normally with normal high explosive. It reduces my chance for fire, but with the rate of fire that the Perth has and the number of guns, that doesn't really matter all that much when it comes down to setting fires. And that is really what I'm trying to do, is just set fires. All of my torpedoes, unfortunately, are going to miss. That Alabama is closing in on me. Again, have my smoke screen up, so unless that enemy destroyer gets point blank in my face, He's not going to be able to spot me. And you can see there, he's taking blind shots into the smoke screen as I'm moving, but Perth's special smoke screen means that I'm able to continue to move forward. Set that guy on fire, not once, but twice. Once on the bow, once amidship, and now he's going to burn down. So I'm just going to get a few more shots out at him, and hopefully the fires will take him out. In fact, it looks like these shots aren't even going to hit as I manage to burn him down and earn a Kraken Unleashed. Now... Our Sharon Horse was being a little bit mm, negative in chat there because he was commenting that we lost on points. Well, not, not anymore we didn't. By killing that Alabama, we reset the points count total again. Enemy team's still in that 900 points bracket, but look how many points we have. And there's still two minutes left in the game. Now, he is a fast battleship, so all he needs to do is go step on the decap point. He doesn't even have to cap it. He just needs to step on it, prevent the enemy team, and neither of us can die. Assuming neither of us die, steps on the decap point within the next minute and a half, and we should win on points. We should end up with more points. But there's one ship left here on the enemy team, and it would be really nice to go find and kill that little destroyer bastard. So I'm going to hold at the sea cap point because this is where he was last known to be, and I'm not entirely sure he's not going to try and sneak around one of these islands to go after the Sharn Horse, who's low health, or myself. And that's when I'm spotted. And since there are a bunch of islands in the way, I know exactly where he's at. He's popped up here, going to get shots out. Should not necessarily have chased him in this case. I should be playing to stay alive and playing for victory. But I have my catapult fighters up. I have my hydro acoustic up right now. So I'm confident I'm going to see any of the torpedoes that come in if he's going to get them away. And he's fairly low health. And he's only a tier 6. I have a lot of health. And I can afford to eat one torpedo from him. Speaking of torpedoes, there's the torpedoes. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to get my ship turned. And I'm going to dodge pretty much all of them. And now with his torpedo weaponry used up and him trying to run away with all the modules knocked out and low health, I'm just going to go ahead, finish him off, earn a sixth kill in this game, and win out here. Just that minute, barely a minute 
before the end anyway. Overall, 66,669 damage done in that game. Six kills. <laughs> oh, I... I love it when I, all sixes come together. Only metal there, Kraken Unleashed. Top of the team for XP earned at 2,100 base XP. And a shout out to the Sharn Horse player who did pretty well too, earning just shy of 2,000 base XP. Anyway, that's it for today's video, folks. And that's it for this year's videos, folks. It's the last video official of 2017. If you'd like to get semi-regular channel news and updates, you can do so by liking and following me on Facebook. If you'd like to help support me in the channel going into 2018, you can do so by becoming my supporter on Patreon. If you've got a replay like this one that you'd like to see feature in my channel, you can send it to my email. And if you'd like to watch me play various games live after the new year, you can do so by following me on Twitch. You can find the links for all of those in the video description down below. And as always, I'll see you next time. This is Captain Rye, signing off.